The Beaches Podcast is going to give you everything you want to know about a beach before you go there. I hope you enjoy the show. Be sure to check out our website, www.sandee.com. Without further ado, let's get into the show. Okay, so North Carolina beaches. You want to hit up the Outer Banks, right? You've been feeding me all this stuff about lighthouses and seafood and nude beaches. That sounds like someone's looking for a little adventure with their relaxation. Hey, I'm just reading what you gave me. And speaking of which, before we dive into all that, maybe we could back up a bit. For those of us who haven't been, what makes the Outer Banks so special anyway? Well, the Outer Banks, or OBX as you'll often hear it called, they're not your typical coastline. They're barrier islands, which are basically just sand dunes holding back the full force of the Atlantic. So kind of a fragile existence then? Exactly. Makes for beautiful beaches, sure, but also a constantly changing environment. You never know what you're going to get, especially with the weather. You mean like those hurricane warnings they always seem to be under? Well, that's part of it. But the Outer Banks also sit right where the Gulf Stream and the Labrador Current collide, warm water meets cold. Talk about a recipe for some wild weather. One minute it's sunny, next thing you know, you've got a gale force wind whipping up. Sounds invigorating. <laughs> Guess that explains the whole graveyard of the Atlantic reputation, huh? Which brings us to those lighthouses. You're saying why they were so important. Oh, absolutely. Imagine you're a sailor way back when, navigating these treacherous shoals, dense fog rolling in. Lighthouses were a beacon of hope, literally the difference between life and death out there. Right, because before GPS, those things were all they had, huh? Exactly. And today, a lot of them are preserved as historical sites. Like you mentioned Cape Hatteras. Oh, yeah, the one with the black and white stripes. That's the one. You know, they've actually had to move it inland several times. What? Seriously. Yeah, because of those shifting sands I was talking about. Erosion was threatening to send the whole thing tumbling into the ocean. Wow. Talk about a story to tell. All right, enough about shipwrecks and dramatic rescues. Let's talk about something a little more my speed. Seafood. The notes he gave me said that the Outer Banks are like seafood heaven. Oh, 100%. Because of the Gulf Stream, everything's crazy fresh. Mm. But it's not just the freshness, it's how they prepare it. Ever had Carolina-style soft-shell crab? I can't say I have. Oh, man, picture this. Whole soft-shell crab, lightly dusted with cornmeal, Fried up nice and crispy. Ugh, it's divine. It's a local thing you absolutely got to try. All right, you've convinced me, adding that to the list. <laughs> okay, so about those nude beaches. Our listener was really curious about this. And, I mean, it's not exactly our usual territory, but you know what they say, knowledge is power, right? mm -hmm. For sure. And it's all about responsible travel, which means being aware of local laws and customs. So while the Outer Banks are gorgeous and might seem like a free-for-all, North Carolina actually has some pretty strict laws about public nudity. So even if someone finds a secluded spot on the beach, it's better to be safe than sorry. Exactly. Do your research, you know? Always better to be in the know than accidentally on the wrong side of the law. Solid advice. So we've covered treacherous waters, amazing food, and even the legal risks of being too comfortable on the beach. How does one even start planning an actual trip to the Outer Banks? Well, picking the right time to go is huge. Summer is the warmest, obviously, but it's also going to be the most crowded and everything's more expensive then. Yeah. Spring or fall, though, that's when you get those milder temps, fewer people and those incredible sunsets. You know, lighthouses silhouetted against a fiery sky. Someone's been reading too many travel brochures. I can tell. What can I say? It's inspiring. OK. OK. So we've got our historic lighthouses, delicious food, enough natural beauty to fill a thousand Instagram feeds. Don't forget to pack for all types of weather like we talked about. Seriously, layers are key. And remember, responsible travel is the name of the game. Be respectful of the environment. Be respectful of the people who live there and their laws, and you're going to have an awesome time. Couldn't have said it better myself. You know, thinking about those lighthouses, standing watch all those years, through thick and thin, storms and sunny days, I wonder what stories they'd tell if they could talk. Ooh, good one. Makes you think, doesn't it? Thanks for listening to the show and be sure to tune in next week for your favorite episode about some of the best beaches and beach information in the world.